Hi guys, well, let's have a look at setting out um, a latte mug template. Now this is for sublimation work, mostly. But if you want to wrap an image around a curved or tapered mug, such as a latte mug, and we're looking at the 12 ounce version here, then this is how you do it. So let's get right into it. In Affinity Photo, start with a new document. I'll use a standard A5 print sheet in landscape mode, but of course you can use any size because you're going to change it anyway. Now set the document to transparent and set the following measurements exactly. Set the width to 3035.8 pixels, 3035.8, and the height to 1368.8 pixels. Now you can save that as I've done in the presets, and I saved it under a 12 ounce blank so that we've got the blank um, sheet there ready to go for next time. And you can see it's in my presets. This, by the way, is Affinity Photo version 2.4. Now, to best see this effect, make the document transparent. And you can see that here. I've set the on the second tab there, you've got layout, color, and margins. And I've ticked the little box that says transparent background. And you can see the pattern up there. And that's all there is to that. You're probably familiar with that already. Now, place a white rectangle over the canvas. Make sure it's exactly the same size. If you've got uh, the little magnet up the top ticked on, so that it's... It, um, shows the red and green lines when you're exactly on the line. And now make sure the color is perfectly white. In decimal, that's 255, or hex, it's uh, four six Fs. Now we need to place some guides exactly in the right place on the canvas. These guides are very important. So let's look at them in detail. You can see them there, and you can enter those by going to View and Set and Guides and Guide Detail. Enter the guides as you see them there. Now there they are clearly. If you bring up the Guide Manager and enter these guides exactly as you see them there, and when finished, lock the guides from the option in the View tool. Now you can see them there, and now these these um, will sort themselves in numerical size so be careful as they move around a little bit as you enter them so just watch out for that and and uh, make sure you've got them set in that order and you'll see them appear on your document as you do them now your canvas will look like this when you're finished and currently you have one layer and you can see the layer in the layers panel there and you can see the guides fairly clearly on the screen now these guides become very important in just a moment. You can see there what we're doing. Now for the tricky bit, we need to draw in the base outline of the curved latte mug. For this we use the pen tool. So select the pen tool. You can see down the left hand side of the toolbar there, there's pen tool and node tool. Now select the pen tool, set the stroke, to four pixels and align the stroke to the inside. Set the color to black. Place the first point on the left and you can see the left that's right at the end of that first guideline on the left and then click all the points in one continuous line from start to finish. So on the left click then go right across to the right hand side number two and click there, then go down to number three on the bottom of the vertical on the right there, then across to number four, which is the bottom of the vertical on the left hand side, and then back up to the start, which is number five, and click there. So you've got one continuous line. Don't go from left to right, back to front. You'll end up with lines all over the place. Now that line will be still selected. So Press Command D to deselect when you're finished. You must have one continuous line right the way around. It won't really work properly if you don't. Now, the next little bit, as we roll right along in this, 
Use the Node tool. Now that's in the same section as the Pen tool. Select the Node tool this time and select the exact center of the top line, which is you'll see there. Click on the top line and draw it up towards the top of the diagram. Now do the same with the bottom line. Click right on the bottom line and draw it slowly up towards the bottom most guideline. And your end result should look something like this. Now you have to be very careful as you're drawing these up because they'll get away from you otherwise and you'll end up all over the page. But never mind, just um, Command Z to go back a step or Command Z to go back a few steps and just toy with it until you get it exactly right. Now note your layers display now. Now we're ready to add our images but we have to add bend our images to suit. You can see the two layers there and we've got our line drawn all the way around where the image is going to be. Select the image that you want to put on your latte mug and make it exactly the same size as the template you have already. And you can see the size there, 3036 pixels by 1369 pixels. Now, although you might have 1368.8, Affinity has a tendency to round the numbers up that are visible. Don't worry about that. It's so minute you're not going to notice it. As I say there, Affinity will round those numbers up. It's not a problem. But it has to be exactly the same size as the white background you were looking at a moment ago. Now, select the bottom layer and place, using the place mode, your flat image into the project. You can see where I've placed it there and you can see where it sits in the layers panel. Notice again that it's exactly the same size as your template, but it's not bent. Now, if you were to isolate that image in there by cutting out the template size and wrapping that around a mug, it would be a very strange shape because the horizon would not line up on your mug, would it? It, it? it certainly wouldn't follow the mug around. And if you wonder about that, just try it. Just clip that image out, cut it out of a piece of paper and wrap it around your mug. And you'll see exactly what I mean straight away. I should try and find an image and, and put that in there, but never mind. You'll see how it works. Obviously, if you don't bend it, it will look very strange on your latte mug. So select the image in the layers panel, and you can see I've got it selected there. Then select Mesh Warp from the Filters Distort menu. So up to the top to Filters, select Distort, go right a little bit and down to the bottom and select Mesh Warp. And you'll see it puts a border right around the whole image. With the with the stort mesh warp selected, you'll see the border selected right around the image. Now I've gone one step past that there, but you can see the dots in the corner of the image and the handles drawn up there. They will normally be lying flat around the white uh, part of the image. Now with the mouse pointer, select the bottom left corner and drag it across to the left bottom point of the template. Use the handles to align the sides and the curves. Now you can see the handles there. I've got the red arrow pointing at one of the handles. If you look back along that and down a little bit, you'll see a dot there, which is the end of one of the left hand handles. On the left side of the image, you can, and of course you can obviously see the curve in it, you'll see that there's a straight line along there because the handles are directly in line, but the top left point is a little bit inside the black outline. Now I'll adjust that later, but for now it's there so you can see how you line them up. On the right hand side, you can see the two dots. They're the ends of the two right hand side handles that you adjust there. And the top ones 
have got the curve neatly there so you can see them. You might need to play with that a little bit if you're not familiar with it, but small movements make a big difference to how those handles adjust the curves. Now once you've got those right where you want them, you then click apply. Because if you don't, and you just move on to the next image, the, the image will straighten out because you'll lose all of your um, lose all of your adjustments. When you're happy with the lineup of the sides and curves, you can remove the black template line by simply unselecting that layer. And you can see it's unselected. The black line or the black template is gone and you can unselect the white background layer which leaves the transparent background there. Now, that's your image ready to print and sublimate onto your 12 ounce latte mug. And that's the end of this exercise. Short and sweet. And the most difficult part is possibly the mesh warp where you're bending and curving. But what I'd like to do, possibly next, is um, show you how that works. Okay, let me show you how you get that curved image into this black template. Now, I've already got the image up here, and that's up on here. You can see it's exactly the right size, 3036 by 1369. The numbers are very small there. I've got a peer at them. So let's just go and edit and copy that image. I'll open up the template again and I'll go to there. I've got that one, the highlight missing off that, but that's all right. Control V or Command V, I should say, puts the image in and you can see it's exactly the right size for that template. And of course, it's not curved. So if you put that onto a mug, it's going to look very weird because it won't fit. The horizon will disappear off around the side and it will look absolutely terrible. Now, what we've got to do is go up here to filters and select distort, go to mesh warp, select mesh warp, and you can see the border now changes to that white, very fine white rectangle. Now that's exactly what we want. Go to the left hand side, you'll see the importance of these guidelines now. Take hold of the little dot down there and drag it along so it's right at the bottom of the left vertical guideline. Go up to the top, bring the right, bring that one down there so it's right on the edge of the left vertical, the left edge. Now we get hold of the handle here, you can see the dot just there on the left hand side. Drag that handle in there so it's lined up down along the left hand side of the template. Now grab hold of the other handle and line that one up. That's very neat there now. Now we go over to the right hand side. We do the same there. Bring that over to there. The top right hand side bring that down to there to the right hand side of the first horizontal now we've got a couple of handles there we just bring those handles in so they line up along the black line bring that handle there so it lines up along the black line and you can see our right hand side lines are perfectly in line now go down to the bottom of the center guide right on the bottom Click on that and just carefully bring it up so it's right there. Now you can see that it's a little bit off just there. So we've got to bring that one up and you can nudge that along there a little bit. And the same with that one. Nudge that along there a little bit. Bring that down a little bit. Bring that up along there a little bit. That one there is a slightly off. Now you can see the handles have come up there, which is what we want. So you can use the handles just to adjust 
that curve nicely. And you can see the ocean already is nicely curved. Now let's go up to the top and take that one up there, straight up the horizontal till it reaches the top. Now that's almost perfect up there. That's just what we want. The bottom one's pretty much the same. Now that you're happy with that, that's really straightforward. Now remember, this is important. You've got to go up to the left hand side and click on apply. If you don't do that and you move away, the whole image will straighten out again and you'll lose all your hard work. So you can see there. Now, if you want to get rid of the black line, which is there, just click on that and unselect it. If you want to get rid of the white background, click on that and unselect it. Now, there's your image. You can see there's nothing there, but if you click on the black again, there's your template guide. So you can put any images you like in there and adjust them so that they curve neatly in there. Just so long as they're the exact size of that white background, you can then curve them as needs be to fit into there. Now, that's really all you need. OK. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the like button and share it with all of your friends. Thanks for watching. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.